Ken Fisher, I thought the trend was my friend. Now you're telling me I need to step away from the herd in order to beat the crowd. Why don't you explain? In recent decades, technology through things like the internet, mass, television channels, and every other form has so boosted and juiced the noise signal that sentiments become funneled and herd mentality has evolved into not just the herd that people used to bet against, but now the herd and the anti-herd. And you actually want to be able to game them both by stepping away from the herd, identifying the herd and identifying the snarky anti-herd, the no-no-knowers who think they're contrarians, and move to that other world that's quiet and largely ignored. And how do you do that? Do you leg into a stock? Do you jump in with two feet? What's the best way to go where there's no herd? The best thing first is to start by measuring herd, which is a sentiment function. And if you think about it kind of like it's a clock, there's 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock, and pretty soon in a digital age we don't actually be able to recognize a clock, but pretty much the market discounts, if everybody's focused on 12, the market discounts everything from about 10.30 to 11.30, prices it, and it pretty much never happens. What people don't get is that the same is true of the reverse from sort of 4.30 to 7.30. And then you look on the others and you see what's a big thing someplace that's on the other that people don't notice. So, for example, in the recent time uh, of the last few months, a point that's in the book that I actually mentioned in my Forbes column in the book Beat the Crowd is the 86.4% miracle, which is just simply that when you look at the fourth quarter of a midterm election year, the first quarter of the next year, and the second quarter of the next year, three quarters in a row, each of them, the market's been positive 86.4% of all history, which is both purely a coincidence, but it's an amazing spread between normal market positiveness and is a testament to the power of increased gridlock. And then you overlap that with the political phenomena of the third year of a president's term, which is a little more understood. And you link those two together and you say, this is a great political environment on stocks. Are there any fundamental metrics that you look for when you're looking to find these no herd stocks, price to earnings, price to sales, which is something that you looked at a while ago? Yes, so the answer is yes, but. Like all other things, the more everyone's focused on it, the more it's priced into the marketplace, the more everyone thinks it's wonderful, the more it's priced into the marketplace. And the standard metrics like PE, uh, they get to work sometimes, but they also have the times they don't work because there's so many people that are fixated on them today. Earnings per share is one of those things that everyone's fixated on, the trend of earnings per share announcements. The one that is working and I believe will continue to work for some time because people do not fixate on it is one I learned about when I was very young, which is to focus over the course of a cycle on thin margin companies versus fat margin companies versus time. In the more or less first half of a bull market, companies with thin gross operating profit margins, which then feel the pressure of downsideness, tend to do best as the pressure of the spring is released as the economy does better than people think it will. On the back side of a bull market, it's the fat gross operating profit margin companies that as a category tend to do best. People don't think in terms of gross operating margins and link gross operating margins to time in the cycle, which again is covered in my book, Beat the Crowd. And that actually helps you get to where you're fishing in the right part of the pond. And then finally, where's the best place to beat the crowd right now? Uh, one of the features that, again, going back to what I just said, I think is A, Focus globally and then use sentiment to see where recently people have said to be and know not to be there and know you got to be someplace else. So if you look at all of last year, increasingly the sentiment said in stocks, you want to be in U.S. stocks, foreign's no good. And by the time you get to the end of the year, it's the S&P compared to that foreign thing that was negative for the year. This year, of course, that's flipped. And that sentiment flip this year is still sufficiently new that it should have legs that carry it through the end of this year. And so the place you want to be thinking is outside the U.S. You want to be thinking core Europe. You want to be thinking individually about emerging markets countries and be focused on the places where people haven't been focused, away from the herd, away from the anti-herd to the no herd. Thanks a lot, Ken Fisher. Thanks, Greg. Always good to see you. Thank you for watching The Street.